friends, I'm here with another how to draw video, this time of a Luffy from One Piece. Um, sadly, I had the entire video of actually drawing this, <laughs> and then I found out that the camera wasn't focused, so it was completely blurry, and I didn't use it here, so we'll just <laughs> jump straight into coloring this. Um, what I'm doing now is applying a first layer of watercolor. What I was aiming for here is sort of a semi-realistic look, well at least a bit more realistic than just the manga or anime. And I'm applying a very dark layer to the right side and a brighter layer to the left side of the face. Light comes from the left in this specific um, painting and so the right part is going to be darkened throughout the entire uh, painting process, you'll see that it's darker than the left part. There are some bright spots, just for example below the right eye you can see a, a bright spot because of the shape of the face. This area is turned a bit to the left and so it's a bit brighter. And below the, the head, usually around the neck and chest area, it's gonna be a darker tone because it's a more shaded area. Under the eyebrows also there tends to be some shadow and I'm doing that, I'm indicating that under the eyes. Um, just uh, to, to sort of give you an explanation of the color I used here for the face, I mixed uh, red with some yellow and orange and I made it very bright by adding a lot of water and this is how I got this uh, flesh tone. But you can do it in many different ways, you can mix uh, red with some uh, brown, you can do it in many many different ways. I also, I've also done it using red and blue. These are colors that also work well, they create this sort of a grey brownish tone that you can use also for flesh. Um, under the hat, which has the straw hat, the famous uh, straw hat, you can see some shadow as well. And it's also under the strands of hair to the top, uh, which will also be completely black in a few moments. Now I'm adding some shape to the nose. The bottom part, the bottom right part is the darkest, and the right also is significantly dark. And now you can see that I actually have a gray color instead of black here, <laughs> so I have to really paint a thick layer, and I even use two or maybe even three. Now, a lot of people use white for the eyes, but the white of the eyes isn't actually white as it reflects a lot of the environment. So in this drawing I used this purple, purplish tone and I completely colored the right eye and the left one is just on the sides. I also began indicating the teeth and now I'm blackening the hair. As you can see, the color is pretty much gray, so I'll have to go over it with a black marker, maybe, in the end. The teeth are very subtle here, and I'll make them a bit more prominent, but this is one part of the face that you really gotta be careful with, because if you make them too prominent, it creates this, this weird look. Even in realistic portraits, watercolor portraits, you need to be very careful with the mouth and the eyes in general, but also the teeth. If, if they are exposed, you need to sort of be very gentle with them. So now I'm darkening the entire right part of the teeth, but I'll also add some shadow in between the teeth on the left side to make them pop. But as I mentioned, I'm not actually drawing the shape of the teeth because that'll be too, too prominent. I'm using like very, it will be too bold. I'm just indicating their shape using the shadow and a bit of a red tone for the gums. So I mix now a large quantity of yellow for the straw hat and I'm using my thicker brush. This is better for applying color to large surfaces. I sometimes don't use it and then it ends up looking fragmented and sort of not, not unified, the color. And for this part there that's white, at the moment I'm mixing some red and the red that I got was way too bright so I'm actually gonna add another layer of darker more more hued red and just like with the face the right side of the hat is also darker so 
So I'm adding the second layer of red because it was way too bright. And I'm making the right side also darker by mixing a bit of my gray-black with the red. Now I'm adding some details that actually indicate the straw texture of the hat. And we can start coloring his shirt. This is just, I'm not going in too much with too many details here, just adding a basic layer of red and later on a darker one of the, like again, some gray with the red or maybe even I use that dark, uh, pur not purple, but pink. Right? I'm not too worried about the tones themselves. Now you can see how just adding a bit more shadow to the ears really makes them pop and makes them look more um, detailed. Colors usually really don't, I just mix what looks right to me and it's, it's, I saw in a video actually that the tone itself, the value, how dark it is, is much more important than the, the actual color. You can go with many different colors and it will still look pretty good as long as you keep the values right, you get the darkness of the color uh, right. So now I'm getting the darkness of the hair right by actually making it entirely black using the marker as I mentioned I'll do uh, earlier and I'm adding some strands of hair to get that more of a realistic effect here instead of those big blocks and that's it thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe to my channel and also if you prefer me to go with a little less time-lapsed videos and more real-time explanation definitely let me know i used to do that more in the past and i've changed the way i work a bit uh, so let me know if it works for you and that's it i'll see you in the next video and have an awesome week